Hello, I'm Brigantia Blackbird of Blackbird's Brew. Happy Friday, and welcome back to our series, The Pagan Housewife. This week, we're going to talk about thresholds, doorways, windows, mirrors, and screens, as in our computer screens or our phone screens. But at last, we are getting into the practical, nitty-gritty of magical housekeeping and transforming knowledge into practice. So whether you're the person who's taking on the primary responsibility for running the household, or you're just wanting to show greater support for the person who is, I hope this video will have a few ideas that you can use and maybe help you come up with a few ideas on your own about how to make your space as magical as what is possible. So, thresholds. These are inherently magical places. They embody the idea of the in-between. They are neither in nor out, and they serve as portals, both literally and magically. Doorways are essentially, you know, the entrances and exits, duh, and they allow for the physical comings and goings as well as serving as a means for energies to go in and out. And we don't often think about that, that every time we are opening or closing that door, we're letting something in, we're keeping something inside, but we are. Uh, that's part of what makes us such a vulnerable spot to the home, and that's why we diligently lock our doors, to make it harder for those of criminal intent to violate our home. And it's for the same reason that it's prudent to keep this area magically cleansed and guarded to make it more difficult for unwanted energies to make their way into our space. Windows. Uh, Scott Cunningham, who is a well-known pagan writer, he called windows the eyes of the home. Now, our physical eyes are useful for observing the physical world, but when someone gazes into our eyes, they're catching glimpses of our inner being. And the same principle applies to our windows. We can see out of them, but it also allows passerbys a way to look in, and that includes energy coming in through them. And that's why this is another area that requires magical attention. Now, when it comes to mirrors, the reason why I included mirrors when discussing thresholds is because while mirrors are uh, primarily reflective and, you know, amplifiers of energy, they can also act as portals. It's not as obvious a source of energy as doorways and windows. And I'm not claiming that the energy coming in from a mirror has the same volume or intensity as, you know, the more obvious thresholds in the house. But a mirror is still a point of vulnerability in the home, and it's advantageous to put in safeguards. Now, screens. It's time to rag on our dreaded technological screens, our TVs, computers, tablets, cell phones. They all bring the outside world directly into the intimacy of our home. And these screens also project our homes into the world. Uh, the widespread use of Zoom and similar technologies has made this commonplace. To say nothing of the various YouTube channels in which people's homes and what they're doing in them, how they're decorating them, it's actually the foundation of their content. So in many ways, we are relying on our screens for social interaction of any kind, and that trend is likely to continue, making the need to apply magical principles and protections to our technology more important than ever. So let us begin. Uh, cleaning and cleansing these thresholds is a vital for the well-being of the household. Now with cleaning, this obviously deals with the physical buildup of dust and dirt and we need to use the right tool for the appropriate materials. Some products will uh, cause damage if they're used improperly or on a surface that they're not meant for. That's the first consideration. The second issue really has to do with thoroughness. Uh, most of us have likely cleaned something <laughs> that we only did a so-so, good enough for now, I'm tired and don't want to type a job. We're all busy, it happens. But before we're doing uh, magical cleansings and before we set magical protections in place, it's best to do a thorough physical cleaning. Uh, for example, if I'm warding my front door, uh, before I did that, I would clean the door itself, you know, the front, the back, as well as uh, sweeping the threshold on both sides and making sure the woodwork around the door has been thoroughly dusted. That way, it's a clear space. Now for the cleansing. This deals with stagnant energies and unfriendly energies, whether those energies have a sentient consciousness or otherwise. And so after we perform a cleansing, we have a neutral base upon which to work on and build on. And ideally, there wouldn't be a huge time lapse between the cleansing and the next step, the warding or setting other magical protections in place. And uh, skipping, skipping the step of cleaning and cleansing is not advisable. Uh, if you would compare it to you know, you know someone's coming over to the house and you need to tidy up. But instead of actually doing the cleaning and doing the tidying, you just, uh, you stuff the worst of the mess into the closets. You close the door and just pray that door will hold and that the contents won't spill out onto the floor. Now, our guest, maybe none the wiser, 
but we know what the true situation is. Even if we don't get caught and the overstuffed closets keep our secrets, there's still an undercurrent of anxiety we have to deal with because we know our home isn't in order. Similarly, if we choose not to clean and cleanse before warding, we aren't setting ourselves up for success and we may find ourselves having legitimate doubts as to whether our efforts will be effective because we haven't laid the foundation. So, when it comes to warding, which is essentially setting forth magical protections, we'll begin with doors and, of course, salting. This is a well-known magical staple for protecting doors and windows for a reason. It's effective, straightforward, cheap, simple to do. Uh, but there are other things you can do. For example, if you are you know, living in a place where you can actually choose your door color, you can do so with magical intention. You might choose red, representing power, protection. Uh, vibrant energy, you know, motive power. It also attracts good fortune if you choose a red door. Or you might choose green, representing prosperity and health. Or uh, something in the range of royal blue, indigo, purple. This represents magic, spirituality, connection with the deity. If you're on a priestly path, that uh, might be more the color range you might choose too, because it's relevant for your path. Uh, another good color for a front door is black, because that represents authority, strength, and a successful career. Another way to guard our entryways is to hang wind chimes. The sounds actually purify the atmosphere and the energies around the door. We can also anoint the door with essential oils such as cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, orange, or lemon. Uh, we can also hang magical wreaths with protective symbols worked into the design. An uh, example would be uh, pentacles, relevant augums, and runes. Now for our windows. Uh, the first thing we can do is we might add, you know, a drop or two of lemon essential oil into our usual glass cleaner. This will act as a purifier and as a protective agent. Remember, lemon is associated with the sun and it has all that purifying energy associated with it. This is why we study symbolism so much, is so we can draw upon those energies when we need to. Uh, also on our windows, we could hang uh, leaded crystal points or faceted spheres and in them. Uh, when the sun hits them, you'll have lots of little tiny rainbows, and the rainbows will attract beneficial energy as well as serving as a protective shield over that window. If possible, uh, we can also grow plants known to have protective qualities and, you know, little pots on the windowsill. Uh, I have to admit I'm not doing that right now because my own windowsills are too narrow, but for those who have the option, uh, you might grow basil or dill, uh, fennel, spearmint, thyme, uh, maybe an aloe plant, which has healing uses on top of protective uses, or even ferns, you know, common, simple household ferns that you could find absolutely everywhere. If you can get them to live in your house, putting them in front of the window and using them as a protective energy, um, activating that for its purpose, it can be a simple, effective thing. And these are also options that are good for people who are still in the broom closet, because who's going to be any of the wiser that these plants are being used for magical intention? No one, but you'll know and you can use it. Uh, another option is that you could place a small figurine or a picture of a deity in the windowsill for protection. Uh, namely, you would probably want to uh, draw upon gods and goddesses that have a strong association with the hearth. That would really be the ideal choice. Uh, another idea is to anoint the window frames and sills with patchouli oil, which is a very good protective agent. For our mirrors, uh, we could add an essential oil such as honeysuckle to the glass cleaner. And we can clean the mirror, make sure it's as streak-free as humanly possible. Uh, the honeysuckle in it will infuse that mirror with protective energies and create a nice barrier and a shield. We could also burn sandalwood incense all around the mirror, thus breaking any ties of energies that we don't want there. Uh, we could uh, attach a moon snail shell to the mirror. Uh, that is specifically to invoke the protection from the goddess. Uh, we could also perform a four elements charm to bless the mirror. And uh, one simple, straightforward way of doing this is to sit before the mirror and have uh, representations of all four elements. You might do uh, have a little bowl of salt for earth, have a bowl of water, maybe have a feather a can and a candle. And you begin, and you could say, uh, I infuse this mirror with the grounding of the earth so its energies may be steady against all influences. And what you would do is essentially touch that bowl of salt to the mirror, Focus your intention and let it infuse. Uh, then next, you would um, take your feather, touch it to the mirror, and say, I infuse this mirror with the briskness of the wind to carry away all harmful energies. And then from there, you would take the candle burning, 
uh, don't put the flame directly against the mirror, but the candle itself you can manage, and say, I infuse this mirror with the power of fire. May it burn away impurities, and may the smoke shield this home and all those within it from all enemies. And then lastly, you would take your bowl of water, touch it to the mirror, and say, I infuse this mirror with the cleansing qualities of water so that all that is unclean is washed away. Uh, another option to protect the mirror is to have a representation of a sea animal near the mirror for just another layer of protection. Crabs, eels, seals, sharks, these are all good possibilities. Now for our screens. Uh, we could burn Palo Santo incense around all of our electronic devices. One of the interesting qualities of Palo Santo incense is its ability to transmute how the energy in, in that space is functioning. Instead of something baneful, it will change it into a neutral or even a beneficial state of energy. Uh, when our devices are not in use, uh, shut them down if at all possible. Cover the screen. Shut the lid on the laptop. Uh, turn the screen of the cell phone or your tablet face down. If your TV is in a cabinet, close the doors. Alternatively, if, if this is practical to do, we could drape a piece of opaque cloth over the screen. We don't have to have it there all the time. Uh, another option is to place crystals around these screens. Um, some options would be quartz or snowflake obsidian. The snowflake obsidian is specifically to prevent the drainage of energy. Uh, we could also use citrine, carnelian, peridot, serpentine, hematite, tiger's eye, black tourmaline, and amethyst. We could also hang a pot of ivy near the TV. That's also a fairly common house plant. Or uh, we could hang it close to where we charge our electronic devices. Ivy has protective qualities. And then lastly, on the devices themselves, we could choose a background that uh, makes us feel happy or has spiritual significance to us that gives us uh, good protective vibes or that actually has protection symbols relevant to your personal path incorporated into the image. We have the options. Now for dewarding. Uh, every so often we will need to deward, especially a full dewarding around the house, so that whatever we may have inadvertently trapped in has a way of getting out, but also for the reason that over time our magical protections will lose their strength, and it's just time to renew them. Uh, taking down the remnants of the old protections is important uh, because otherwise we'll be trying to build something new on the old foundations. And those old foundations have cracked. Anything we put on top of that will become structurally compromised. It's important in, in the physical world. It's important in the magical world. So how we might do this. Uh, first, we'll need to walk Wittershins, which means counterclockwise, around your home or around the object that you are dewarding. You will hold your projective hand out. That'll be your dominant hand. You'll be palm down and you'll be visualizing a strong blue beam of light slicing through the wall or the boundary you constructed with the original ward. You declare your intention to dissolve the ward, thank it for all its hard work in the past, and then let it go with your blessing. So this, is, this brings us to the issue of maintenance. As previously mentioned, putting protections in place is something we will just need to periodically redo. In nature, we can observe that all things do decay. Entropy happens. It is inevitable. And that applies to our magic as well. Uh, refreshing threshold protections seasonally is usually going to be sufficient. However, if there's been a lot of upheaval affecting our lives, it would probably be prudent to redo, redo the warding on a monthly basis until things settle down. So, we have work to do. I hope you're excited to try out some of these ideas, and I hope you'll also be inspired to independently research other methods so that you can have as many tools in your toolkit as what is possible. You do have the power to protect and improve the state of your home, so I encourage you to seize this capability and make the most of it. So, that's it for now. If you would like to continue the discussion, uh, please come uh, feel free to visit us at Blackbirds Brew on Discord. There is a link to join in the description box below. In the meantime, please subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.